straight to the point. The title of my part actually is about news writing. So, is there any one of you who know how to write a news article? Do you have any idea about news writing? So, what do you see on television, especially during Bentecuata or us? So, basically, those are combination of Yes, there are. Uh, it talks about journalism, about the content is about news, the 24 hours, ABS, CBN, TV Patrol, and basically some of the contents have the editorial news and the feature writing news. But I'll just be focusing on the news writing. Okay, so let me show you the objectives for today so that you will know what's going to happen during our uh, lecture about news writing. So the first one is for you to determine the meaning of news writing. What does it mean by determine? The meaning of news writing, since, since many of you do not know yet about the meaning of news writing, so you have to huh? know it, yes, you got it right. You have to find its meaning or what news writing is. So the second one here is you have to identify the characteristics of news and the process of news writing. So how many of you, uh, when you found out that we are going to have the workshop today, how many of you have tried researching for the news writing or the feature writing? Did anybody here who have tried uh, doing some research about this topic. Voila, I see it. So you have to identify later on the characters of news writing. And if you have the idea, uh, I will just have I will give you a simple token if you're able to answer a few of my questions later about news writing. Okay? So the third object for this lecture is to understand the inverted pyramid structure and its importance in news writing. And for the last one, this is actually part of our workshop this up afternoon, is for you to create effective headlines and leads. Basically, um, I think I will just be asked if you can create a short news writing or article with three paragraphs, okay, or just one paragraph, which is the need, then it's okay with us. But we'll just try to find out later on. Okay, so right now, all you have to do is to take notes of the important information about the topics that we'll be giving you. Okay, question. Now let us proceed to the main point. In your idea, what do you think is news writing? I'll just I'll give you a simple token if you'll be able to give at least okay, a simple meaning or somehow related to the meaning of news writing. What do you think is news writing? Pag, pag gumagawa ko ng balita, 
hindi pwede na lang humula ka na, hindi tayo pwede mag maritens. Diba? Kasi pag gawa ka ng balita about HS, hindi ka pwede na gumawa ng araw, ang oras ginawa, at hindi ka pwede mag-embel ka lang ng pangalan ng tao na involved doon sa balita. Ibig sabihin, you have to be truthful or factual. Or the information that you are sharing is true. So, one definition here that we have is news writing is a specialized form of writing within the field of journalism that involves the creation of news stories, articles, and reports. Sabi nga, kanina, give information. Yes, you create stories, articles, to inform the public about the current events, developments, and issues. So, what's the current event here in HS? Do you know the title of our event? Ayan. So, this is the current activity or program here in your school. Later on, you can create an article or a news writing in every of your six of you will be creating a news article about our activity today. Aside from this, did you celebrate the Alisa? Do you have International Day here? Did you celebrate International Day? Oh, no. So, I'd like to is a Teacher's Day, right? World Teacher's Day. So you can actually create news about that uh, topic or issue or program. Next news article is, okay, the primary goal of news writing is to present information accurately, objectively, and concisely following journalistic standards or conventions. So accurate so aside from being factual, dapat the information should be correct. Objective, you have to focus on the objective of your, your report. Wala na daw pa uli -uli pa. For example, HS students attend the seminar workshop. So hindi na sinabi, one of the students from HS elementary, uh, HS school, who is beautiful, attend. Wala we have to be very direct to the boy. Wala nang pangulikuli when we do that, when we create the list. Next, the style of writing is characterized by its adherence to news values, the use of the inverted pyramid structure, and focus on providing essential details and context to the audience. Kung ano lang yung gusto mo iparating, for example, ang topic mo lang ay the workshop today, so you will be only on the questions of what, who, when, how, or where. Yun lang yung sasabihin mo, especially if the topic is just about the program today. Hindi mo na sasabihin yung field trip, hindi mo na sasabihin yung uh, Sabbath program that had happened the last Sabbath, hindi na yung kasama. Because your focus only is about the balita. <laughs> the balita about the program today. Pag ba nagbalita yung mensya mo, Paiba-iba ba siya ng sinasabi? Lumiliwas ba siya sa topic niya? Oo, hindi. Hindi. Pag sinabi niya, nag-celebrate ang GMA 7, nag-celebrate lang ang topic niya. Wala nang iba. Ayan. So, just like what I have asked you a uh, while ago, sabi niya, informative. So, news writing should be informative, factual, and interesting. So, it, uh, aside from being factual and informative, dapat daw pala, yung balita mo ay magka-capture na attention na iba ng mga readers mo or ng audience mo. For example, here in Ares, you will be making articles, pero your first target is for the students of HS2 to, ano, to read your news article. So, dapat isila yung unang target sa kaang mga parents na mga kabasa na doon. Second, can be the people around ahead, HS, who will be reading your article. Okay? Next, what do you think are the types of news articles based on the three definitions that I have on the screen? Types of news articles. 
Sabi dyan, no? Reports on current, current events of specific area of community. Reports lang daw sa specific area, for example, sa school, o dito lang sa puting kahoy, or sa kabite. What do you think of the type of news article? Ano kaya yun? Walaan nyo, starts with letter L. Sa puting kahoy lang, sa school nyo lang, sa community of uh, sila kabite, there is only a specific area where we can get news from that or information. Starts with letter L. Five. Let me check. Five. Five letters starts with letter L. Anyone who can guess it? That start, it starts with letter L. Letter. Mm -hmm. Any other answer? Starts with letter L and ends with letter L. Huh? What's your answer? Local. Local. Wow, you got it. Right. Can we give him a round of applause? Oh, she ended. I am very good. Okay, so. Ibig sabihin pa na kapag ang report ko ay about lang dito sa school nyo, sa community, certain community of habits, it can be called as local. Or within the uh, puting kahon. How about reports on current affairs within a particular country? Country na. So kung may local tayo, yes? Yes, you got it right. It's national or national news article. Ayan, very good job. How about the third one? In front of the local. Global. We have the national, so it's about the information abroad or balita sa ibang bansa. Pwede sa Ukraine versus Russia, balita, the Miss Universe, pageant. Oh. And what you can guess from the ladies? Huh? Worldwide. It can be worldwide. Pwede na rin, but the specific answer is Pwede global. Sige, magbigyan na natin sa yung bilangan. Okay, it's, it starts with letter I. O pwede na natin yung sagot niyo kasi they are synonymous with each other. So international, Uh, news articles, balita about sa mundo, global. Pwede na rin Alright. Importance of accurate and credible news. Bakit daw kailangan na, bakit daw importante ang pagkakaroon na tama? Accurate, eksakto, at credible news. Bakit kailangan? Okay. Diretso na tayo. Baka makausap rin. Meron pa? Ang nga pa pa pala yung oras ko. Alright. Bakit kailangan so, importance of accurate and credible news? Bakit daw kailangan sakto, tama ang informasyon na bibigyan mo sa balita mo? Pwede ba kung pwede ka bang ipakulong pag mali yung iyong balita? Pwede ka bang ipakulong kasi nagbabalita ka ng mali? Lalo na pag nasa TV ka na, maybe one of you someday will become a news anchor Because here in Silang Cavite, I think sa bayan, Silang Bayan, we have already a uh, news anchor, di ba? Mayroon na yung uh, local journalists in Silang Cavite. Oh, but maybe one day, you can become a journalist. Oh, bakit kailangan? One thing that you have to know is because you have to inform the citizen of For example, Silang Cavite, you have to have accurate news because it allows citizens to stay informed about local, national, and international events, enabling them to make informed decisions, participate in the democratic process, and engage in discussions about important issues. Pwede naman pala tayo maging bahagi ng balita, pero in a right way, baka yung balita natin ay chismis, chismis na, ay hindi ka tamang provider ng balita and you're not informing the citizen uh, 
uh, you're not informing the your neighbors or classmates the right information. The second one is why do you think we need accurate and uh, credible news? Because you need to gain the trust of the public audience. Hindi lang yun. Eh kung gagawa ka dito ng balita dito sa AES, tapos mali-mali information mo, eh hindi ba may question ka ng mga classmate mo? For example, uh, what's your name? Ah, si Pamela. Kung meron si Pamela, gumawa ng balita na mali yung pangalan na inilagay, inilagay mo. Eh di, sabihin mo na nabasa, ay, hindi mo nilagay niya. Credible ba yun? Is it credible? Kapalipaniwala ba siya? Hindi. Namali ang spelling ng pangalan na isinulat mo. For example, si President Ferdinand Marcos, nilagay mo ay letter P. Ferdinand Marcos. Hindi pa rin yung credible. It means you lack what? What, did you, what are you lacking when you created the wrong spelling? Sa? Parang naging fake news kasi di man. Pwede rin naman, but because of the mechanics that you use, you need to check the proper grammar. So, dapat pala, when you gain the public trust, tamang spelling, tamang information, tamang grammar, tama lahat. Para paniwalaan ka. What else? Okay. As much as possible, oh, for example, may isang balita, eh hindi mo lalo kasi kung saan saan mo lang narinig yung balita. So sa article, you have to avoid, you should provide conflict resolution or solution to the questions of the audience or to the public para di, pag tinanong yung ibang tao, ay nabasa nila, ah ito, ganito pa rin nangyari. Okay, sa HS pala nag-workshop sila mga Chita, sila mga Uh, Jeremy, sila mga Giselle. Kaya pag sinabi, ay doon yung sa ano, pagtari elementary school. Oh, so, mali pa rin ang information mo and at the same time, hindi na solve yung question. So, journalism can contribute to conflict resolution by providing objective platform for different perspective. Reducing misinformation and misunderstandings. So, pag nagbalita, ano ba yung mga reason dito sa inyo. Bigyan mo nga ako, anong nangyayari dito sa HACES? Uh, aside from our workshop today. Ano yung main uh, event dito last week? Yes. Ah, yes! Film trip! So, you went to Manila. Manila also last Thursday? Thursday too. Ang mga kayo nandito na mga elementary students, no? Anyway, so, the event was a field trip. So, later on, I'll give you the example of the headline about the field trip. Okay, so, tama yun. Pag tinanong ang balita about sa field trip, ang mga possible question na pagbalita ay kailan, saan, okay, sino-sino, okay, yung mga sumama sa field trip. Yun lang usually ang talong. Hindi na tatanong ngayon kung anong pangalan ng nanay mo na sumama sa field trip. Basically, it focuses on the field trip business. Okay, next. Safety and emergency information. So, accurate news is essential during emergencies and crises. It can save lives by providing timely information about national disasters, health crises, and safety measures. Bakit? Balita sa weather. Pwede pa ang ano yun? Who's article about sa panahon? Yes or no? Pwede. Because there are certain areas that we can create no. So, paano ka gagawa ng headlines? Hindi nga. Gumawa ka nga ng direct to the point. Hindi na naman ganun. Nabalita tungkol sa panahon. Sino pwede? Sino na nagbabalit? Iba ka na nagbabalit ko sa GMN ngayon eh. So, pwede pa ang tulong yung balita mo. Okay? About national or about the disasters. Yung COVID-19, di ba? Malaki influence ng balita. Many people died in COVID-19. Sabi, died, died agad. The word there is died. Namatay agad. Nakatulong ba yung balita? Pwede? Information, pero it's about health. 
for safety measures. Ibig sabihin, you have to be very careful. Ayan, ito naman. Sino ang isa? Who can give me one example of the characteristics of news? Or we can call it as news values. May, may actually, if you are going to search on the internet, there are lots. But let's just focus on the five essential characteristics of news writing. Meron pa kayo? Meron pa kayong idea? Ano pa yung characteristic na isang balita aside from being incredible, accurate, informative, factual, ano pa? We call this one as news values. Meron ba? Ha? Okay, so ayun mo na. Ayun na ni Mamzel. Timeliness. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng timeliness? Kailangan ba 5 years ago pa? O ano yung ibig sabihin ng timeliness? Babae. Babae sa likod. Pwede ba ako tumawag ng pangalan? What does it mean by timeliness? Dapat na yung panita mo ay very timely. Ano yung sabi mo? Hmm? New? O oh, pwede, yes. The recent news today. O oh, pwede yun. That's why right. ibig sabi ng timeliness ay sa Tagalog ay na Oh, 
kilalang tao, kilala politiko. Okay? Iba pa kasi yung sa teacher ay hindi mo pa ginawa pero pwede mo silang gawa ng balita. And of course, dapat ang balita mo ay about sa personal experiences or human elements without the larger with, with the larger event. So, maraming mga kakaibang balita. Minsan, masusurprise ka, nakakatakot or it evokes emotion. So, ito po pala yung lima. Ibilisan ko na, mayroon tayong tinatawag na inverted pyramid. Ang inverted pyramid po natin ay, okay, dito to this. Mayroon tayong lead, body, and conclusion. Ang gagawin nyo mamaya yung lead, kung kaya nyo. Pero kung kaya nyo gumawa nito, may, 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 may ano to, may galit si ma'am, sa magagaling, magagandang gawa. So, yung lead, sa unang paragraph nyo, yun yung para opening statement nyo. But it has to be very informative and factual and captivating. Okay? Sa body, doon mo i-explain yung nangyari. Para essay writing lang yan. Tama po ba? Tama po ba? Parang essay writing lang. Pero sa essay writing, hindi mo agad sasabihin kung anong nangyari. Pero dito, sa balita, sasabihin mo agad sa pinakaunahan. Pero sa essay, ang introduction mo, patikim lang. Okay? Dito, ang first paragraph mo, sinagot na kung sino, ano, at kailan. Pwede ganun ang mangyari. And of course, the least important facts can be in the last paragraph. So, as you can see, tatlo lang to, pero tatlo lang din ang gagawin ng paragraph, or pwede yung lead lang, depending on our time. Ayan. So, organize. So, ang pyramid pala ay organizes and presents information sa inyo na susar. So, dito na tayo. Bukas ako na. Headline. Ano ba yung headline? Sa essay, meron tayo title. Tama po ba? Sa essay, may title tayo. Sa balita, may tinatawag tayo headline. So, yung headline na yun, yun yung pinag-uusapan ng inyong balita. Okay. Naintindihan mo ba? Taas na ka ba yung naintindihan ng headline? Higher please. Kasi ito yung gagawin nyo. Okay. It is concise and attention grabbing. Title that summarizes the main point of focus of the news article. Basically, ang headline pa natin ay two sentences or as much as possible one sentence lang. Ilan? Dalawa o tatlo? Hanggang maaari, isang straight to the point sentence lang ang headline mo. Okay? Ito na, isa ng hati. Pag gumawa kayo ng headline, dapat concise, maikli, malinaw, clarity, accuracy, tama, relevant, o importante, engaging. Tapos, tone niya, sabi dito mo sila the application of the story, pwede daw ba siya light-hearted, serious, or urgent. Depende sa gusto mong mangyari. Yung balita mo ba ay nakakatakot or hindi? Yung key information mo, avoid jargon. Ano ba yung sabihin ng jargon? For example, sa AS, pag sinabi yung jargon, dapat ba naiintindihan ng mga sa AS yung kadakais yung sinasabi mo sa newsletter mo? Yes or no? Yes! Kasi pag gumamit ka ng Bisaya, doon, or ng ibang language, hindi nila maintindihan yun. For example, mga Tagalog ang mga tao dito, o mga Tagalog ang mga tao dito, dapat maintindihan ang mas nakakaraming taga-kaes. Okay? Hindi yung magbigay ka ng French or let's say British English na hindi maintindihan ang mga taga-kaes. Kasi we follow the American English. Ayan. So, grammar is time. Katulad sinabi ko, ay importante. Ito nga, ang examples ng headline. Okay. Sana na iintindihan nyo, no? Tapos ng oras, ito, focus tayo sa number two. Example ng headline, direct to the point. Students at HS celebrate the record-breaking exam results. Ano yung very, what do you think is the word na is very prevalent in this statement. Ano yung word? What type of, uh, what type of speech? Ano po dyan? 
Thailand. Students at HS celebrate record-breaking exam results. Ano yung isang word na sa society ay makikita nyo? Dapat ba yung adjective? Adjective po ba or verb? Adjective or verb? Anong adjective? Nag-describe. Pero, ang ginamit doon ay celebrate. Ano yun? Verb. So, sa news writing pala, sa mga examples, dapat, as much as possible, direct to the point ka. Okay, celebrate. It's a verb. Ayan, tingnan nyo. Let's have the field trip. Exploring beyond the classroom as students embark Okay, on an opening field trip. Oh, for example, this one. About community. Connecting with the neighborhood has host books open house event. Makinig po tayo, pagmuha tayo ha. Ibig sabihin, direct to the point lang. Okay? Pagmuha ka ng headline mo. Ito example. Creator power our supervisor. Imagine, may ganyan na ang hais. Ano? Sino ang president? May SGSG pa rin ba? O sino? Who is the president of this school? Ah, what's your name? Kapamela. Try to imagine that in the future or after our workshop, let's say after two months, your school will have this one. Well, before you graduate, you can produce this one. O, di ba? Anong feeling na sa batch nyo, kayo ay mayroong ano, news writing. Ang inyong o, may publication rather ang inyong school. Challenge ko yan sa'yo, ha? Ang school mo, bago nyo ha, great, mayroon kayong school publication. Okay. Ngayon, ginawa ni Ma, ang sample niya. Tingnan nyo, o. Very simple lang ang kanyang Sentence, yung headline. Kung baga sa essay, mga kuya at ate ay direct to the point. Sabi dyan, Hi, ano ba sa dyan? Hi, Sians. Hi, Sians, produce newsletter. Direct to the point ba? Direct to the point ba? Oo. Wala lang pa rin gumawa ng newsletter sa mga taga Nagpaligoy-ligoy ba? Hindi. So, wala ka na iba. Yan ang sinasabi natin yung headline. Next. Kung titignan mo dito, wala ka ang type. Eto, for the second statement, has students participate in journalism seminar. Okay, pwede nyo na lang yun or pwede nyo yung dagdagan yun pa. Next. Has students join in Gen Alpha News Journalism Workshop debut Highest Tidings Newsletter. Direct to the point, nag-join lang kayo ng workshop. Ito na tayo sa lead. O, tingnan nyo dito, nasaan ang lead? Sa first example, saan ang lead dito? Second, first or second paragraph. Ha? Nasaan ang lead? Okay, but those are actually basically the examples of 
Vamos cantar, ó. Vamos cantar essa derecha aqui. Yeah. Então, eu vou mandar. Answers the five W H question and a summary. You need to. I see now my eyes on us. The first. Nakasummarize agad. Sa essay, ang nakasummarize sa last, di ba? Sa balita, ang nakasummarize sa unahan. Okay, mga ate. May tanong si ma. Sa essay daw, ang summary ay nasa huli, conclusion. Pero sa lead, sa loose writing daw, nasa na ang summary? Nasa una, nasa huli? Nasa unahan. Yun ang nasa lead. Okay, tapos na si Ma'am Zell. Mamaya, Your challenge, the challenge for you is to create. Ibigay namin kayo ng examples para makakreate kayo ng headline for you. Thank you so much and we will proceed to the beach teacher for editorial. Lagi niyong tandaan, objective lang ang news writing. Walang panikuliko, directo na po. Use the verb as much as possible. Okay? May question po ba? Okay. 